Hello, beautiful people. Hello, hi, how are you? Hope your affairs are in order. So, based off of the title, you know what time it is. It's time for a TBR. This one's a little different. It's the final TBR of 2021. Admittedly, I haven't been on booktube for that long. So this is only maybe my third, maybe TBR. And okay, I know it's kind of late. It's December 16th, wow. And I'm filming a TBR for the month of December. Technically, yes, but not really. I've been, I think I've read already about six books. This wrap, this TBR is a little different because we have exactly 15 days until the end of the year and I've given myself a little challenge. There, you probably remember at one point I said I wanted to read like 12 books before the end of the year, maybe more, I don't know. I said something ridiculous like that and I don't think that's happening. I scaled it back down. Instead, I have six books that I want to read before the end of the year. I have a week off from work, so from December 24th to the 31st. I should be able to like get this done. Let's hope. Now, without further ado, let's just get into it. Right now, I'm in the midst of two books. So I'm going to start with those two, just, just so you guys know. So you guys get a little idea of what's going to be in the wrap-up. The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson. This is the last in the Mistborn trilogy. I'm on page 531 out of 740. We are following Vin and Ellen and all of our beloved characters as they try to save the world from ending. Yes. Then I also started um, Signs Pre... Oh, similarly, huh, funny enough, Signs Preceding the End of the World by Yuri Herrera. Um, this I'm hoping to finish today. Fingers crossed. I'm on page 18. The writing is very smooth and dreamlike. It follows our main character, Makina, who has to go from Mexico to the United States. And she's leaving behind her life in Mexico to search for her brother. She's smuggled into, into the US carrying a pair of secret messages, one from her mother and one from the Mexican underworld. So I'm enjoying it so far. It does ever so slightly remind me of, um, I think, Pedro, which I mentioned in my favorite books of all time video, in the, in the sense that we have a main character who's on a journey, and along the way, it just feels very dreamlike. That's the vibe I'm getting. It's only the beginning, though. I know. Alrighty. Then we have six books. Six of them. Six amazing books. Here we have The Aunt Who Wouldn't Die, and this follows the story. I basically picked this up because I liked the cover. I like that it's a little slim book, and I'm also a fan of South Asian literature. So this, fo this follows our main character, who's about 18 years old and has recently been married, and she's been, she's expected to, you know, settle into the role of the wife. And it's not really working because she stumbles into the body of her great-aunt-in-law, great Fushima, while wandering the halls of the Grand Decaying Mansion. So I think this, sh this should be um, funny. It's apparently a very beloved story from Bangladesh. So, there's that. Uh, next, we've got Rabbits, Crabs, Etc. Stories by Japanese Women. Um, I don't know if you guys have picked up on this, but I have, a, a, I'm a big fan of Japanese literature and I've been on a big like short story kick, just trying to like learn as much as I can. I find that there's a very, the short stories, they all have a very like absurd little, the ones that I've read all have a touch of the absurd in them. So I'm wondering if these will hold true. They are, I think, much older than most of the short stories that I typically read. It's translated by Phyllis Birnbaum, who I was Googling recently. She lives in the Boston area, so one of my own. So the preface says, this collection must begin by remembering that the first eminent prose writers in, ja in Japanese were women. I think it's a really great opportunity to 
learn more about authors I wouldn't have heard of and stories I would not have known. Right here, we've got a collection of short, they're probably not short. We've got a collection of essays, The Right to Sex, Feminism in the 21st Century. Um, I know a few people have read this. The font size is looking a little daunting. Um, so I, I might not be able to finish this, but hopefully, like, there's a lot of uh, notes at the end and acknowledgements and whatever. So it's only about 179 pages, so hopefully I get through it. But I think it should be an interesting read just to, you know, delve more so into the language and surrounding sex, especially in the wake of having read like My Body by Amrata and then Mona and a few of the other things that I've read this year. I feel like this will be a great way to culminate some of those thoughts and things. Next, we've got The Setting Sun, another Japanese lit. This is a favorite of many I've heard. On the back, we've got this powerful and tragic novel vividly paints life in a nation in social and moral crisis. Set in the early post-war post years, it probes the destructive effects of war and the transition from a feudal Japan to an industrial society. My impression is that this will be moving and sad, but interesting. And I think, I hope I love it. We will see, but I really hope I do. Okay, the final two books are kind of big. We've got this one, uh, The House in the Cerulean Sea. I know a lot of people on BookTube and BookTok seem to love it. It's the story of this caseworker who goes to the Department of Charge of Magical Youth, and he's like, very bureaucratic and he's trying to do something, but this orphanage isn't really, won't really let him do what he's come to do, whatever it may be. So I think it will be lighthearted and fun and a good way to end the year. Next, we've got The Idiot, which I know people love and it's shocking I haven't gotten around to it yet. The year is 1995 and email is new. That's the preface, that, that's the scene we're setting. And I don't really know a lot about what this book is about, even though I know it's so popular and it's been around the block. Um, I could try to guess thoughts about the internet, language, love. Those are the themes I think we're gonna hit. We'll see if that is true, we will see. So, that kind of wraps up this TBR. It was a little, it was a short one, but I'm excited to kind of finish up my reading for the year. I've read about 54 books, maybe. Ho I'm hoping that by completing these, we'll bring it up to 60. Does it really matter at the end of the day? No, it, it doesn't. It's just more so for me and my ego, but that's life and yeah, I'm gonna wrap this video up. I would love to hear from you guys. What are you, what you're reading in like the last two weeks of 2021? What is on the docket? Let me know in the comments. And if you've read any of the books that I've read, tell me your thoughts. And with that, I will see you guys later. Please be sure to subscribe, drop a comment, and you know, I'll see you later. Bye.